And this is an element of, of racism, and it's an element of our racist past. We're still in it. Our schools are more segregated today than they have ever been, even though there was Brown, the first Board of Education said, into segregated schools are no longer legal. What did white people do when Brown versus education hit uh, the fan? They moved to the suburbs, they left the cities, they created their own private schools and what have you. It's very, very difficult to get people who don't know each other, who have never lived with each other, uh, to understand each other. Now, keep in mind, these are very emotional issues. They're not rational issues, they're emotional issues. Lots and lots of politics works on the basis of emotion. And I can tell you Donald Trump is a master of emotional appeal. And in addition to that, he has a lot of, uh, and don't take it from me, a lot of experts say he has a lot of autocratic tendencies. He doesn't particularly like democracy. Democracy is messy. You gotta deal with the legislature. It's much easier to have executive orders and do my bidding. Remember a, a, a particular phrase that struck me when he ran for president, only I can fix it. The country's broken and only I can fix it. When you have that kind of a mental framework, that's authoritarianism uh, in, in, in the making. So what do authoritarians do? What, uh, and, and if you forgive me a moment, uh, good, good place to go to my notes here for a second. What, one of the things that authoritarians do is they reject weak commitments to the democratic rule of the, of the game. And one of the most important rules of democracy is respect and toleration for your opponent. When, when you run for office, you, you understand that win or lose, you accept the results of, of, of those findings, and during the campaign, you don't, you, 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 you don't define or, or denigrate your opponent. You might have different ideas. Now, it doesn't mean we don't have neg negative ad ads in this country uh, when elections take place, but mostly debates are on a fairly uh, uh, friendly, friendly basis. Well, not if you remember back on the Republican primaries uh, when 17 Republicans ran against Donald Trump, he denigrated every single one of them with with funny names, you know, uh, I forget some of them, but uh, low, low energy, uh, Jeb, uh, what have you. But even worse, uh, during the campaign against Hillary Clinton, he said, lock her up. And this is classic, classic authoritarian behavior. Uh, this is what went on with all the goons in Europe that once they got in power, they would put their opponent in jail. Now that doesn't usually happen in the United States, but it was enough for him to say it, for people to think it. And again, it's an emotional, emotional appeal. And a lot of that uh, good standing that we have as Americans is being disrupted because we are now more polarized than ever before. We live in an extremely uh, polarized society. Uh, so I've already mentioned the denial of the legitimacy of political opponents, uh, and you, that's what you do. You, you, you try to delegitimize, <coughs> you call them subversives. You call them uh, essential existential threat to national security. Now, remember when Trump took away national security credentials from some of his political people that were criticizing him? This classic authoritarian personality, classic 
they described their partisan rivals as criminals. And I could go on and on, but I don't want to do that. So, and toleration and encouragement of violence. Now, I don't know if any of you have been to one of Trump's uh, campaign rallies, but basically in those rallies, he encouraged, he encouraged violence. All right, and then we had, then we had Charlottesville. Remember Charlottesville? Uh, shortly into his administration, where neo-Nazis came with their torches and, and of course, counter uh, protesters met them, as well they should have. And then uh, somebody died. And what did Mr. Trump say? He said they were equally uh, to blame, both sides. Now, when is it that in America you can't say that Nazi people are bad? You know, he couldn't. He could not do that. So, so violence as a tool of separating people is very, very common in authoritarian governments. It's happening in Europe right now as we speak in some of the more authoritarian places like Hungary. Poland is succumbing to right-wing extremists. Hungary has been completely taken over by a, a minister. Uh, and and uh, so there's a lot of violence going on there. And the readiness to curtail the civil liberties of opponents, including the media. Mr. Trump has not hesitated on multiple occasions to call the press that is enshrined in our Constitution, First Amendment, freedom of the press. The press is the enemy of the people. He has said that on multiple, multiple, multiple occasions. And that's one of the few checks. The press is one of the few checks in addition to, I mean, we, we're supposed to have a, a system of, of balance of power, but the press is incredibly important in, in that balance. So I, I just looked and realized I've taken up all of the time. If there's questions, I'll be happy to take them. I don't know. Uh, if not, I'm sticking around. Just one, one brief comment. I don't know if everyone saw Sunday night. Uh, if you watched the event, it was unbelievable. They had a young man, that's his mid 30s. I would Google this and I would take a look at it. That was a liberal Democrat for many, many years. And now he has shifted gears. And he's actually going to colleges and universities educating. You know, the, the high school kids. Uh, you know, leaving kids. stickers. I learned a lot. I mean, I was listening to this guy, what he went through on that <coughs> side. And to hear somebody younger that's in their 30s, I thought was, you know, had a lot of credibility. And uh, anyway, just a recommendation to hear that. Dan, thank you so much. Did you get one of these already? I, I've got a whole collection. I think you brought them <laughs> Excellent. We'll, we'll keep them coming. Yeah. Thank you. I'll, I think, I'll uh, be around if any of you have. I think it's great to um, perhaps better for uh, more one-on-one -on -one engagement and future uh, table conversations uh, going forward. So thanks for uh, for preparing and, and doing that today. It's great to have expertise. Yeah, one other thing yeah. that's interesting. It used to be that uh, multi, uh, mixed marriages were, were viewed as negatively, <laughs> and of course racial marriages and what have you. Now, according to the latest poll, 45% of Democrats say they would not be happy if their child married a Republican. <laughs> and 35% of Republicans say they would be very unhappy if their child married a Democrat. 25% of, De of Republicans and 7% of Democrats would disapprove of their child marrying someone of a different race. And 58% of Republicans and 25% of Democrats would disapprove of their child marrying someone of the same gender. <laughs> so just a couple of reminders. We uh, uh, want to uh, continue to